It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons, and welcome to today's episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. I'm Austin Peterson, your host, and joined by my co-host, Landon Mance from Las Vegas, Nevada. We're also excited to have in studio with us today, Travis Rogers, CEO and founder of Dr. DDS Innovations. Travis, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, excited to uh, talk to you. Before we jump into the conversation, though, I just want to, uh, for our audience, let them know if this is the first time you're listening to our show, our, our program is, is by small business owners for small business owners. The whole idea of this program is to share s- stories and ideas and advice to small business owners because we know that the small business the small business community in our country is truly the backbone of the, of the American economy. And so that's why we do the show. We're excited to have a new guest in every single week. If you're listening to the show and you think of your think to yourself, I'm a tycoon of small biz, reach out to us. You can find us uh, on social media, tycoons of small biz on LinkedIn, wherever you'd like to, to uh, get in touch with us and, and talk about coming on the show. So with that said, Travis, welcome to the studio. Yeah. Thanks for having me guys. Excited to be on the show and share some knowledge. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> We typically like to start with the personal side of things, um, maybe, you know, kind of what your why is or, or, you know, whatever you'd like to talk to us about. Tell us about your family. Tell us about your upbringing and kind of how you got to where you are today. Yeah. So um, as far as childhood and upbringing, I, I grew up in Silicon Valley. So, you know, they, they say it's, it's in the water in Silicon Valley. I literally you know, grew up uh, playing with Steve Wozniak's kids. And this is not the Steve Wozniak that you know, because we were all in <laughs> small middle-class houses, right? This was the, the pre-Silicon Valley. This is what everybody was grinding to make it, to make it happen. Um, this is when, uh, you know, hard drives were the size of this room and they were five gigabytes, right? So grew up in Silicon Valley, you know, always been an entrepreneur. I had two paper routes when I was a kid, you know, waking up at 5 a.m., selling gumballs to my friends. Um, and, uh, you know, and then, you know, just fast forward, went to, went to college, business major, started my first company when I was in college and, and fell flat on that one. Um, but uh, learned a lot of lessons. And then, um, you know, started, I went the corporate route, did Oracle, IBM, did some startups along the way. And about 15 years ago, started in the dental industry. And, and my why in the dental industry is, um, I actually started a teeth whitening company called Bright White originally. And I, you know, you just see the effects that that good dentistry, the the, the confidence that it gives people. Um, they walk out of the dentist with a big smile saying, I love my dentist, which is actually one of my trademark brands. And so that's what I love about the dental industry. You know, it's it's and and what I do, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. So what we're gonna talk a little about bit about today is, you know is potentially selling to dentists and the healthcare industry as a whole. But I think there's just so much that I've, I've learned along the way, you know, I call it falling forward, right? Um, all the different lessons I've learned, if I could go back and tell, tell my younger self what I, what I know now. And so that's what I love to do now is, you know, I don't, I don't take money for coaching. I, I just, I just love to mentor and help people. Um, and like I said, you know, when I started this, I had a full, full 401k, a nice cushy job, sales job at IBM, and uh, thought I knew, knew something about starting a business. And, uh, you know, that the 401k is not around, by the way, anymore. That, <laughs> that wasn't clear. But, uh, you know, learned a lot of lessons. I, I, I had a I had a thick, full, full, dark set of hair right when I started. And, uh, you know, I'm thinning and, and gray and, uh, and a divorce probably caused as well by it. So if I can help prevent some of those things for the folks that I that I work with and mentor and give advice to, you know, happy to help. And uh, you know, happy to say every, everything's going well now. Launched a lot of products. I've launched over 250 different products for other people, and then built about 25 for our by, for ourselves. Um, my specifically focus is dental software, dental integrations 
Um, I help companies that want to bring their products to the dental industry, bring their products to the dental industry and do it in the most efficient way possible. Yeah, I think that, you know, I think that's funny. Well, a couple of things that I, that I honed in on first, the dental side of things, the, the reality is it does make a huge difference, right? I mean, Landon is a fantastically good looking person, but if he had messed up teeth, he wouldn't be nearly as, as good looking as he is. And as crazy as it sounds, we launched this podcast a little over a year ago. And before that, I was doing some videos for my own social media with my practice. And I started to realize that I had some crooked teeth on the bottom. And it was enough to say, gosh, I'm seeing that myself on the video to go out and get the clear aligners and to get that fixed for me. And it does make a huge difference in the way that you feel about yourself and your own appearance. Yeah, it really does. You know, you see the, the people walk into the dental practice with kind of hunched over, but then they walk out with their new teeth. They're proud, smiling. It's, it's life changing. So, yeah, you know, and if I could br bring products to the market that help dentists, you know, treat and help more people, then, then it's a win. Yeah. The other thing I would mention, just because Landon will jump in and mention it if I don't. So you have the divorce and the thinning hair. I didn't have the divorce. So I guess that's why I'm 100 percent bald. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all good feeling my thunder <laughs> yeah well yeah we, we won't talk about divorce this is about small business but it all ended well you know she's supportive but you know to to take a any kind of marriage through a startup company it's it's not easy so you, you do a big part of success in life and in business is finding that right partner whether it be your 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 life partner or your business partner as well so Yep. Yeah, there, there's a, a lot of truth to that. I mean, Landon and I's practice is built on small business owners. We've seen it all. I mean, it's very common for there to be divorces and, and business partner breakups and everything along the way, because it, it truly is. It's a tough thing to do. Building a business from scratch is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, well, it's 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 those over time. It's it's the compound effect, right? So, and I, I chose to do work with a team in India, right? So it was that eleven o'clock at night where then eventually she stopped coming down at eleven o'clock at night. So, you know, and then what happens after that? You sort of feel like you're a victim, or you you try and blame it on somebody else. But there's also a nice healthy balance of like. You know, take responsibility for what you've done. Take responsibility. There is no victims in small business, right? You're not going to be successful if you go into it as a, as a business owner with that victim mentality. Um, but there's also so much blame and so much you can take yourself. So that healthy balance between, you know, understanding, um, you know, what you take responsibility for in your business and then also what, you know, is not necessarily always in your control. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so you mentioned this falling forward effect, right? And I think that, you know, that's a, that's a good analogy in life period, right? Because we're all just trying to learn and grow and be better day to day, whether it's business or in our personal lives. But tell us a little bit specifically, give us some specific lessons that you've learned running your business throughout the years that, you know, maybe it was a failure, maybe it wasn't, but that have helped you to be even better today in business. Yeah, you know, again, there, there's a couple tips, right? Um, I, I think number one is, you know, having good mentors um, and to, to be able to be mentorable, right? I had those people that were around me, but I don't think I was open to it. So it's being open to feedback, open to advice, um, finding and identifying the right people. Cause you know, most people get to a certain point, they want to give back, they want to help others. Um, and so identifying that, but also going into it with the right attitude. Number two, you know, when you're building a product or you're building a business, make sure that it's not just something that you think is great, not just something that you think is the right thing to build, but it's based on research, you know? So I spent probably a million dollars building a product. I mean, I should run the actual number that was the wrong product, you know? And so, um, you know, it, it, it's a little pit in my stomach, but at the same time, I've forgiven myself just as the world <laughs> forgives you. Right. And because it was lessons learned, that was the, the biggest falling forward for me is I, my original product was called record link and it was a referral product in the dental industry. And I built it based on the feedback of a couple dental specialists that told me this was the right product to build. 
and I didn't open up the knowledge, didn't open up the, the surveying of a larger audience. And so then I learned the process of customer discovery. If you read the book, you know, Steve Blank, it's kind of one of his processes, well-known lean startup guy. Um, go out, interview a lot of people, take feedback, be open to the feedback. Don't just bias the feedback, you know, take the feedback, put it up on a board, get the feedback from a lot of different people if you're going into a market. And, it, you know, it's surprising, but people actually do want to share that feedback. They do want to share that and give people um, an opportunity to be successful by building a product that has a true market fit for it. Yeah, very good advice. Yeah, I got a quick follow up, Travis. So I, I feel like the, the topic of mentorship has come up a few times uh, in the last you know couple of months on the show. And I'm curious kind of what, what your thoughts are. So when, when you think about a mentor and a mentee, I think is what they call the other side of that party, um, what, how, how would you describe that relationship, you know, uh, for that relationship to be successful, how would you describe it? Because I feel like I get two different kind of descriptions. One is that, you know, you have to find somebody that uh, is, is essentially willing to help guide you with really no expectation. And the other side says something more like, well, it needs to be mutually beneficial. So I don't know, what, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? And what have you kind of experienced on yeah. both sides of the table over your years in business? Well, I've, I have both hired people and brought in mentors that were not properly compensated for the work that they did. And you get back accordingly, you know, we're, we're, we're all coin operated, you know, people, use the word abundance and that's great, right? There's very few mentors that are, you know, and they're probably not going to give you that much time unless they have some skin in the game. I'm not saying give the house away, give them, you know, but definitely either compensation of some sort or, or stock and ownership, or, you know, people also have other things that they like, which, you know, notoriety, really, those are the three, right? And so um, make sure you've, talk to the mentor, figure out what's important to them and then push that button. You know, do you need me to compensate you? Do you, would you like to be, would you like some ownership or would you like me to talk about you and how amazing you are, you know, and just, and maybe not so direct like that, but basically it's like, you know, would you like me to help get you some exposure for this type of work that you do? Right. Uh, exposure is much better word to use there. And, um, you know, and so, so to get back to kind of the, 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 the rest of your question there, you know, it's, it's, you also want to find somebody, a, a wide range of mentors. Like I have mentors that are 80 years old, Jim Rohde, Naomi Rohde, two of my favorite people in the dental industry, they're legends, right? I am lucky that they took me on as a mentor, but I also spent time with them and I went and met with them in person and, um, and then I took pictures with them and shared the fact that they are legends, right? And so, um, and, and that's a fact. And then there's others that I pay. I have two coaches that, that I work with that I also consider mentors. And I chose to pay them because I want that level of guidance, you know? And there's really good groups out there. In the dental industry, I run an incubator. It's called Denkubator, denkubator.org. And this is not an advertisement for that, but it's it, what we do is we have a, we have a list of mentors that help people in the dental industry bring those products to the market. But most of them have just become friends, right? A lot of it is like a friendship that you develop when you've got that mentor mentoree uh, relationship. But when you're just starting out, find somebody that you can pay <laughs> that, to do it for you. I mean, because you're going to get the work back accordingly uh, that you're that you're investing into that. Right. No, I love that. Yeah, I, I love that idea of setting the expectations on the front end so that both parties are very clear on what they are trying to get out of it, if, if anything. Yeah. Well, and having good legal guidance going into it as well, because a big part of what I just talked about is have a, having proper documentation, right? So I've made the mistake in my in my business over the years of 
of bringing in higher people, hiring people, promising them things that I wasn't ready to promise them or ready to deliver on like stock and ownership and things like that. And even if you say that to somebody in passing, even if it's just a, a conversation over drinks that you're saying, oh gosh, you're like an owner or I want you to have ownership in this or something like that, they expect a document to then hit their desk the next day. So be careful what you're promising. Don't overpromise. You know, we've all been burned. I judge them by the smiles. You guys have all felt that. And, and I, honestly, I've been on both sides of it. And I hate, I don't like being on this side of it where I've offered it mistakenly. And then somebody, you know, either let me down with their skill set, they weren't the right person. And, you know, it's, it's a tough conversation once you've given something to try and take something away. It's much better, it's much easier to give in small amounts with a documented process that says, this is what you're getting along the way, you know, four year vesting cycle of X number of shares. And then at some point, you know, with a buyback or whatever you want to put in there, but there's, I'm not a lawyer and I know we got some disclosures here, so we won't get into legal <laughs> things, but hire a good lawyer, hire a good accountant as well. I've had uh, some bad accountants over the years that, 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 um, I didn't keep the books as well as I should have and, uh, you know, didn't have the budget as well as I should have. And that's, that had cost me, it probably cost me my 401k for my IBM. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and yeah. we laugh about it, but those are, you know, that's what creates the gray hair, the divorces and the, and the, the thinning hair as well. So good budgeting, good legal, uh, good mentors and a good product fit. You know, those would be four of my, my top tips that I'd give people starting out. Right, right. Fantastic. Yeah. So you have helped build and you have built a lot of software for, for the industry that you're involved in, the dental industry. So um, two-part kind of question here. First is um, spend a minute or, uh, or two and tell us about you know, what, what software that you're working on now, and then pivot and talk to us about um, any suggestions or advice that you'd have to, you know, our listeners, if they are in the process of, or thinking about, you know, developing their own software. Yeah. You know, it's so easy to build software right now. You know, that's the good, that's the good thing and the bad thing, right? Um, and there's so many developers out there, more and more coders, more and more templates, more and more folks overseas that are opening that up. It's almost like, you know, the real estate markets in certain areas, right? Where you build nice homes and then they need to saturate the population and it's the same. And so they start putting up apartments and they devalue the nice homes, right? It's the same thing with software. You know, there's so much bad software being developed that is not filling a certain need, but it might fill one little need. So people spend so much time evaluating other products, other tools. I mean, I've wasted so much time in my career looking at CRM tools, looking at accounting tools, look at stick to one, right? And, uh, and go with it and keep going with it. You know, I've, I've now settled on a great marketing tool called Go High Level, which is what we use. And it's a, it's a nice agency product where I could have multiple different brands because yes, we do have about, I have three major brands that I'm focused on right now. My, my one click referral product, uh, which is a doctor to doctor referral and communication tool. My Verident product, which is electronic insurance. And I built those two products because I interviewed 150 dentists and they told me their biggest pain points are communication, insurance verification, and I dropped everything else I was doing. And it feels really good to say no, <laughs> you know, feels really good to say, I'm not going to do that, you know, which is a hard thing for the, the ultimate serial entrepreneur, you know, Howard Frank called me the number one serial entrepreneur. And I'm like, it's like, I don't want to be a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> and so I read the book, the one thing I read, there's a lot of great books out there, a lot of great knowledge. And that's another thing, you know, continue to read. I read a book a week and, you know, often audio books, but there's, you know, read a book and learn to focus. Right. And I think that's the key um, in what you're talking about there. As far as like what we're focused on insurance uh, referrals, insurance verification, we just launched a, an analytics platform, a, a, a practice analytics, because everybody needs reporting, right? Everybody needs to, to get a better understanding of their business. Unfortunately, in the dental industry, 
you know, and I've studied over 5,000, I've done 5,000 personality tests on dentists to understand their psyche of how they, how they buy and how they use products. And it's got to be, you know, engaging. So with this new analytics platform, it's, it's a hundred percent mobile based and it's just the basic numbers, right? All they want to do is head home, look at the numbers. It's got some gamification um, in there. It's got, uh, think of it kind of like some fantasy football type functionality in there where it makes it fun and engaging. And to me, that's really what it comes down to is if, if you're building software, make sure it's engaging, make sure it solves the problem, right? Don't overbuild it, um, stay focused, um, but also make sure it's engaging for the audience that, that, you're, um, that you're working with. And for dentists, it's got to be integrated with their practice management systems. That's why we're the leader in our industry in building those integrations to the dental practice management systems. It's got to be easy. And then the third one for dentists is it's got to be priced effectively. And um, I've got a whole nother, you know, for those that want it, I've got a whole white paper that I've done on how to sell to dentists. And really, I've got 14 tips and, and it's about 80 different slides. So it's a lot of information, but I have a, I do a series of class on, on how to sell to dentists and what's important to dentists, uh, which we don't have time for today, but that's, um, that's something that, that at some point, if somebody wants to reach out to me at drdds or travisrogers.com, I can, I can send them the PDF of, of that presentation um, or enroll them in the class for free to be able to learn how to sell to dentists. Yeah, I think that's a, a unique thing to look at, right? Because dentists are, are a different breed. Um, Landon and I have interacted with dentists as clients and, and otherwise for a number of years. And what I find, I, I won't speak for Landon, but what I find consistently with dentists and doctors is you got to be pretty smart to be a dentist and a doctor to get through medical school or dental school and all that kind of stuff. Um, but all too often they get to time to run their practice and they assume that they're just as smart at running a practice as they are for what it took to become a dentist yeah. right and that's where they tend to stumble a little bit is they're not actually businessmen or women they haven't studied business and how to run the practice and so you know kind of just give us maybe one or two i know you got the 14 tips but give us one or two of the tips for selling to dentists and what their main pain points are that can be helped with either a software or a service that you're providing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and I, you, some of the stuff, the, the financial services is obviously a big area of, of interest and focus to those guys. Um, but yeah, as far as like the tips, I mean, I, I've, I've got, I've got my, some of my lit list here of what I like to talk about. Right. And um, really, you know, some of it is just the basics, right? Um, I've done about, five, like I said, 5,000 personality tests on dentists, and we found that they are of the conscientious personality type, meaning they're process oriented. They, they, they are very, you know, they're precision oriented. And so you have to sell to them in that manner. And you can't come in too strong. I always tell people, you know, with dentists or, and it's the same with medical practitioners, you know, um, my, my girlfriend, you know, Dr. Laura Cole, he, it's probably the same process with her, right? <laughs> um, she's of the C personality type as well, which, you know, means you have to come into it with a lot more data. You have to, you know, sell to them over a longer period of time, right? So it's probably double the amount of information that you would expect from a regular prospect. Um, and, uh, you know, they don't, dentists and medical practitioners don't necessarily always buy what they need. They buy what they want. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's not about the close, right? It's not, you can overclose, you can close too soon and, and scare them off. It's about the open and it's about the process and it's about information. They, they are very um, much a herd mentality, um, medical practitioners in general. So they want to hear testimonials. They want to know that, five of their other friends are using it. They don't want to be the first to jump in on anything. Um, so it's got to be proven technology, um, which is, you know, in my sense, when I was launching new, you know, I was the first to build the electronic referral in the dental industry, and it was way before its time, right? And uh, it, I actually like competitors, which is kind of funny to say, but you know, having some other products, having an experience with maybe a similar product that you can come in and do it a little bit cheaper, a little bit easier, a little bit more gamified, a little bit more engaging. You know, that's what we're doing with our Scout analytics, our Scout dental product. 
Um, it's the, uh, you know, you look at scout dental on the, on the iTunes store it's, or analytic dental analytics is one of the only dental, dental analytics products that's out there because most people old school doesn't want to see it on the phone, but that's, that's just, that's, it's gotta be easy. Gotta be engaging. Um, some other tips, you know, they're, they're really not, um, either emotional or financial buyers, you know, they're, they're kind of somewhere in between. So you can't really play into one or the other. Um, they do, they often do what others are doing, as we talked about. Um, they like to look at options, you know, that's a big thing for them as well. I want to make sure there's a couple of different op options. They don't want you to talk about competitors and they really, really want you to know who they are, right? A lot of research, I would say triple the research when you're selling to medical practitioners. And this goes back to what we talked about earlier is doing less things but doing going deeper with the fewer things or a fewer prospects when you're selling in the medical industry. Yeah, a lot a lot to unpack there, Landon. But I did I did pull out a couple of uh, of nuggets, and I, and I, it's rung true for me in my interactions with medical practitioners over the years that they they definitely are very analytical in the way that they look at things. And if we're talking about you know from a financial planning standpoint different things that they need to put in place. We've got to be able to show them why, not just say, you need this, right? Yeah. It, it doesn't typically work for us that way. Yeah, so, so from a financial planning perspective, you know, understanding the numbers going into it, having an integrated system where you can pull that out would be, would be important to them. Um, and then obviously they want to see that you've done it as you guys have with lots of dentists and lots of medical practitioners. So you guys, you guys have the, have the background. Um, now it's just the hard, the next hardest part is getting through the gatekeeper <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, and oftentimes, you know, they're, you know, as you know, selling into dentists and medical practitioners in general, their, their gatekeepers do a real good job with their job, which is to keep the, you know, people away from them. So, you know, trade shows are great because they're going there to actually buy. Um, but you have to do a really good job of taking care of the team. <laughs> the team is actually in the end, probably more important than the doctor, you know, because what's happened to that team member and hopefully she's been there as long as she or he, you know, um, you know, we've done a study. It is most, you know, 80% women, you know, in, in the dental practice and office managers. And oftentimes it's the wife of the husband as well. Um, is that, you know, you need to, you need to sell to them as well. And that means, you know, and you're selling to a completely different personality type, by the way, that is the S personality type, uh, which is steady, slow, steady, you know, predictable as well. But those are the people you want to be in your office, right? Just like you want the conscientious dentist. So selling to them is also getting them involved with the decision. You know, when I, have implemented technology and we've done it at thousands of dental practices. Now it's, um, you know, involving the team is very important. And I always tell all the dentists that I'm working with was your team a part of this decision? Because if they weren't, we need to go back to the decision process and bring them in as a part of the decision process, you know? So, and with the team, it's gotta be well-planned because that's their personality, right? Don't just throw something, <laughs> They call it the shiny, you know, shiny the shiny objects. new toy yeah. for the dentist. You know, they don't like, they don't want him to go to trade shows because they know on Monday he's going to come home or she's going to come home wherever the doctor is <laughs> and, and the, it's going to be a new thing that they have to implement, you know? And so it's like, whoa, 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 let's make sure your team's involved because, you know, they're the vocal ones. They're the ones that also are, are, you know, are, are of that personality type that like to like to be involved, but they're also slow and steady. So all yeah. the teams are important. Yeah, that is uh, that that made me think about uh, my my wife. Uh, my wife used worked for a dermatologist for fifteen ish years, and she was the lead. Um, she was the lead on the cosmetic uh, side of the of the uh, practice, not the medical side, and the office. Uh, administrator, uh, he had a, a tremendous amount of say and uh, control of, of the practice. The doctor really was pretty, pretty hands off and that's how she wanted it. And so he would uh, bring in these, you know, new tools or devices 
and he would spend a lot of money on them. I'm talking, you know, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars plus on these, on these devices, and he wouldn't consult, you know, with my wife. And so he would just say, "Here, you know, here's this new thing, and put it into practice." And she'd be like, "This thing, it doesn't. This doesn't accomplish like what we do here. This is not." in alignment with what we're doing. This doesn't, this doesn't work the way that you're saying that it works because he's not in the trenches doing the treatments, you know, she is. So I love that, that advice. And I think that's relevant to any industry, you know, when you're, when you're a decision maker and you're making a, you know, a, a, a big decision like that, that's going to impact other people in your business, you know, maybe you should sit down with them and, and have a 30 minute you know, discussion with them and talk to them and get their feedback and their thoughts and their advice before you, you pull the trigger on something that might not be what you think it's going to be for your business. Yeah, I, I have, um, for me, it's the three C's of implementing technology in a medical practice. You have to have good communication, which is means involving the team. You have to have good coordination, which means you've got a good plan to implement it because those folks want a good plan too. Like, what's the why? Continue to get back to the why for both the doctor and the team. And then the third and oftentimes the most important is that you have to have conviction. You know, what happens is doctor will think or maybe it is the right product. But if you don't have conviction bringing that product back to your practice on Monday or whatever it may be, then you're going to get squashed because you got a team swarming you pushing back because they don't want to have a new process or a new tool or anything that's going to take away their time from going home at five o'clock. Right. So so having that conviction, having the understanding that, you know, this will benefit the practice, this will benefit you. And understanding as a, if you're selling to that doctor, you need to enable them with all those whys, with all the different team members that are involved as to why it's going to benefit, not just them, uh, or not just the doctor, not just the practice, but also the team, right? And so that's a, that's a part of whatever product you're bringing to market. It's almost, it's really threefold because what we're seeing, the trends in the dental industry, there's a lot more DSOs, right? A lot more dental service organizations I was just with uh, Ray Curry, who grew and sold his DSO in Australia for he, the largest in Australia for 1.5 billion, and he's now come to the United States, opening up 1,200 dental practices in the last in the next two years. And he's not opening them; he's acquiring them. But he wants to find those guys that are guys and gals that are middle aged that still want to stay on the practice, purchase them, and help them and give them tools, you know. But DSOs had a bad, bad rap in some ways, just by how they've, they've treated some of the doctors, but there's also some really quality DSOs, you know, Resmanji and others that are opening up ones that are actually like really providing value to the dentists and the team. Big part of that is HR, big part of that is marketing and big part of that is their financials and their financial planning and bringing in the right teams to help with that. You know, you just acquire, in fact, I'm curious from your, your guys' perspective, you know, this guy's going to acquire 1200 different practices over the next two years, right? When you have that 5x exit multiple of your practice, you, you know, revenue, right? What do you do from a planning perspective, right? So what do you do to implement the plan? And he's got to, you got to come into that with that being a part of the process, you know, and that's the why and the why them, you know, and I know the why is kind of abused, right? It's kind of like the word AI or abundance. Like, come on, dude. I worked or at IBM. Pivots, I sold right? Watson. Come on. Don't, don't use that word AI. It's called reporting. You know? yeah. So, uh. yeah, no, I, I, you know, I, it's funny though, that you talk about the way that that's working. Cause I was actually going to bring that up. I've seen a lot of consolidation in the dental industry with these DSOs that you're talking about, where they come in and acquire the practices. And, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that dentists get in there and they realize I don't want to run a business. I, I want to practice dentistry. I still want to be rewarded financially for doing that, but I don't want to run the business. I'm not good at it. It's not what I, what I went to school for. So I just want to be a dentist. And if there's a way for me to kind of have my cake and eat it too, then that can happen with the DSOs. Now you're, you mentioned it, there can be some 
uh, difficulties that happen, right? Yeah, Where we guys, won't name names. Yeah. <laughs> well, we know who they are. <laughs> the, yeah, there, there are groups that are coming in that are taking advantage of dentists too, right? So they've got to be careful. But what really came to mind when you mentioned that is, is something that Landon and I talk a lot about on the show and this just in general with our business owners is beginning with the end in mind, right? So these DSOs need to come in and say, this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it. And our intention is to provide you this financially for now and over the next however long, 5, 10, 15 years. And when you actually exit the practice at that point, there's going to be an exit, a multiple of revenue, a buyout at that point. And we need to be planning for that accordingly. So it, it's interesting to see the way that that aggregation or that consolidation of the dental industry is, is happening today. And, and a lot of it has to do with technology and marketing and HR and an understanding of how to run the business more profitably and efficient. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we didn't use, we haven't brought up the four letter word, you know, which is, which is fear, you know, the fear of the dentist that is fearful that he's, you know, maybe not making the right decision, but also, you know, the fear that the financial plan is not there. The fear that, you know, if I take this exit, if I take this, this financial, you know, if I, if I, I sell out, then the fear that my financials are not in the right place to be able to consume that. So I'm sure you guys have a strategy for that when you're helping folks uh, with that. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, it's, this isn't about us, it's about you, but we, we certainly, we follow what's called the financial planning pyramid, and, and it starts with exactly what you just said, that fear is, are we okay, right? And that we is either the business, or it's the individual person or couple, and then you go up, is my family okay? That's the next level, right? And then is my community okay? And we just follow a, a pretty straightforward process to make sure that they can, we can show them on paper, you will be okay if you do this, this, and this. And it's just a very straightforward process, and it, and it takes that fear out. It makes them more comfortable and confident in their own financial planning and their own financial independence. Yeah, love yeah. it. Yeah, you said something uh, earlier, and uh, it got me, got me thinking. And then since you kind of posed this question, I'll, I'll mention it now. On the, uh, the analytics uh, app or the tool that you said that you, that you have available to uh, dentists or that you're, you're working on, Yep. So um, one of the things that came to mind was, I, I thought, huh, it'd be interesting if in that analytics tool that you offered them, I assume it's it's real time, like you said, they want to, you know, they want to pull up to their 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 house and before they walk inside, they want to pull it up on in the driveway and say, okay, this is where we're at as of you know today or end of the business day yesterday. And one of the things that came to mind was would be really interesting is. In that analytics tool, if you were able to have a column that said, you know, what is my business worth? And uh, it's interesting because Austin and I subscribe to this, this software and it's called Biz Equity. And it's essentially, it's an online fully digital tool to, uh, to help with informal business valuations. It's very intuitive. And um, uh, it's funny because every time that they're trying to recruit a new advisor, you know, to use this tool, the example that they use is a, a dental <laughs> practice. Yeah. So we, we've seen the same uh, uh, scenario, you know, probably a half a dozen times because they're always talking about, oh, if you live in Philadelphia and you, you work with dentists and you want to look at dentists within a 20 mile radius of this particular zip code. So anyway, so that just kind of came no, to you're right. And, and so that is a part of the product is that financial health and the rating, um, you know, obviously we're, we're dealing with HIPAA compliance and, and we're, we're dealing with security there. So we've got to be real conscious of, of that, but generally, right. you know, their own awareness of, of their health rating of their practice is definitely a part of that. Um, and then, you know, if they want to share it, we've actually made it easy to be able to share that and to be able to then work with financial planners, work with accountants, work with, um, you know, folks that are acquiring dental practices to be able to allow by choice, you know, obviously the, the dentist to be able to share that information to then provide that valuation 
and either number one is maybe set them up for a better situation. You know, like, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to do to my bottom line? Or what, what numbers need to change here to get the health to where I want to sell it or where it's ready? And then maybe it's a, a situation where it's like, I'm ready to exit right now. Here are my numbers, you know, and, you know, because we integrate with the dental practice management system, there's no need to remote into the dental software. Like a lot of the acquisitions are doing. It's like, here's just my numbers. Here's what it is. And um, there's definitely an opportunity. In fact, we, we also white label the product. So we built this, this is our fourth analytics platform that we built. So if there are financial planning companies out there, that want to have their instance of it or to be able to work with dentists to be able to have their own version of it, practice analyzer, whatever you want to call it, um, to be able to do that for their customers. It's, it's a great marketing tool, right? What's your practice worth? <laughs> yeah. Click here, download this, and uh, we'll let you know. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's a really cool tool. And, you know, I think about it from just an overall business perspective, whether it's a dentist or any other business, you know, if you don't know your numbers, then you don't really know what's going on inside of your business. And so I, you know, I'd look at it and I, I would have to assume that this tool allows them to know, you know, what's your profit margin on each hygienist? What's, what's your profit margin on each particular type of service that's provided, whether it's fillings or cosmetic stuff or, you know, whatever it is, what do the margins look like? And you can hone in on where are we most profitable? Where are we losing money? How much time and effort are we spending trying to collect from insurance companies? Should we stop allowing or accepting that insurance company because they're a pain to collect from? You know, those are the types of things that I would assume are built into the tool. Yeah. So those are reports. I mean, obviously the whole goal, get right. Remember my top three things, integrated, easy. <laughs> You're starting to talk too complicated there, man. <laughs> You know, and then, you know, priced effectively. So this is $50, right? This is this is a low cost uh, solution to, you know, some other products that are out there that are three to $500, right? We can get the data. It's there in a report. It's also another version of the product if somebody wants to have a different version. But keep in mind, this is like, okay, I went home and what did I make today? I mean, this is one of my customers. He, he did, you know, a couple thousand dollars in collection, you know, $7,000 in collections today, right? So it's like, that's what they want to know. And then how are they tracking, um, which is the more advanced version of this. And we have other versions of the product, but scout is just, what are my numbers basic? And then again, the gamifying it, making it fun, making it easy to share that information with the right folks and getting it in their hands to help, help them make you the right decisions. Right. So that's where there's a large consulting group in the dental industry, both financially and in practice management that helps them. I'm a part of the Academy of Dental Management Consultants, which is the, the biggest group of them. And they're, they're all numbers oriented, right? Um, that's a big part of it. But most dentists don't want to live in those numbers on a day-to-day -day basis. They want to see, you know, how am I doing? What am I doing on just a basic number? And then how am I tracking? So we have a cross user comparison where you can compare yourself to the industry. Uh, you can also compare yourself. Um, obviously, you set goals in there as well. And it just gives you the ability to, um, you know, see how you're tracking on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly um, track against your goal. But uh, that cross user comparison is one of the things that's different in there. So. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Now, now I understand why it should just be simple and you're seeing your basic numbers. But there are practice management softwares that show all that other stuff, which yeah. is extremely important. Well, right? we do. We have, like I said, we have that version of it as well, but that's, you know, again, what we found is people just want the simple numbers, right? Simple cross user. How am I tracking? And then how do you make it fun and engaging? Um, and then the next part of it is also, you know, where are the opportunities in my business? So that's why we call the product scout, you know, like scout the dog that's out there sniffing, for that business opportunity for you in your numbers, right? So cute little dog, kind of catchy. And, uh, you know, Scout will be watching your numbers and looking for that opportunity and then alert you when, you know, something has gone awry, right? So. I love that. I love that. You're, you're providing some, some transparency to these uh, dentists that uh, they probably couldn't get otherwise. And that's a huge problem in the private business owner space, right? Is like one business owners don't typically, they don't have a clue what their business is worth. And if they think 
they have a clue what their business is worth. They're usually way off because they're comparing themselves to a business that was sold by one of their buddies. They've known the guy for 20 years. In their minds, they had very similar businesses, but when it actually comes down to the brass tacks, you know, their, their businesses are, are probably very, very different. And that's just such a huge issue working with private business owners is that there's, there's so little transparency when it comes to, you know, exits and uh, transitions uh, that uh, there's just, uh, it's just so, uh, it's so private. So the fact that you're bringing some transparency to, to that, I think is uh, probably incredibly valuable to your, you know, dentist uh, customers. Yeah. So Landon, you asked me a question earlier that I didn't answer. And you, you asked me what's next for us too. Like, what are we, what's on the roadmap, right? So we've built a platform for it, it. We started in the dental industry, but you can see it could also naturally go to chiropractic. It could go to, you know, all kinds of different verticals, any place where we can integrate, pull data out and give a nice, easy interface to be able to give those numbers that works well for this. Same thing with our referral product, right? Which is everybody's always looking for more referrals. I mean, I have a, that, that's another podcast is you know, re managing referrals because we all know, just like when we met you guys, right? When I met you, it's like when you get referred from somebody, you come in with a 70% chance of closing that that you didn't have before. If you come in cold, it's a much, you know, it's a, it's a single digit percentage, but when it's referred, um, then it comes at a 70% increase. So what we're doing next is we're opening it up to other verticals. So, you know, for anybody that's, that's interested, I'm always open to looking at how else we can utilize the platform. Um, it's easily transferable. You know, it's the beauty of software. Um, the basics, the, the base is all there. Um, so, you know, we're definitely getting into the next part. We're actually starting a product right now um, that is for mental health. Um, and we feel like just with COVID, everything that's gone on with the world, um, one of my, one of my best friends committed suicide this year, this last year, and, you know, getting up and speaking at his, at his funeral, um, you know, it was tough and, uh, he left two kids behind and, uh, he was a great guy full of life. I had talked to him two weeks before that and not to bring us down here, but you know, it's out there, right? I've had two other friends who I talked down from, you know, and I, I hang out with generally very healthy people, right? And so it's, 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 in the, it's in the community, people are hiding it. So the ability, we're calling it Treater, right? Which is the ability to open up an app and just get treatment right now. Um, and we're working with some of the top experts in behavioral health, mental health, uh, to, be, to provide a place where people can go and just open up an app and be like, hey, you know what? I'm feeling down. I'm feeling, I'm having thoughts that I don't want to have. Like open it up, find somebody that could treat you right there, either within a radius, right? So kind of think like Uber for treatment, right? I want to talk to somebody now. And when you're thinking that, you want to talk to somebody now, right? And it's either telemedicine, which is again, getting, getting a little played out, right? People still, now we're getting back to meeting in person. People want to meet in person. They want to have that human interaction, right? Which is partly what's causing the, the, the epidemic of mental health, right? So this will be the ability to find a practitioner that's, you know, that's certified. They're going to go through a process, right? Of being able to, to treat um, and then just be able to go book the appointment, pay, have your patient, have your forms in one spot go immediately meet with them. Uh, some of your history will be tracked as well. So it's transferable from practitioner to practitioner in a HIPAA compliant way, of course, and uh, just be able to, to make an impact on what's coming. You know, I'm scared for our kids, for, for the people that, that's going on with what's happened over the last couple of years. Um, you know, I see it. Um, and obviously lots of time in front of a computer, lots of, lots of, online time, lots of, lots of online bullying, lots of all that stuff. So our next big thing is a product that's going to be called Treater, um, which will be just the ability to get treatment for mental and behavioral health is what it's going to start out as. And um, it's really just, you know, that on-demand product and we're using existing infrastructure that we've already built for other products. So that's what's next. Well, I think it, I think it's a, an application right? Because it is a mobile app, right? Yeah. I mean, it, that is definitely needed. Um, 
you're absolutely right. And I'm, I'm sorry, your friend is no longer with us. It's, it's, we've all been touched by that in some way, shape or form. And it's, it's been hard to watch for me as a parent, right. Um, or as a husband, quite honestly, um, what it does to the rest of your family. Isolationism is not a good thing. And that's essentially what this quarantine has done for so many people is caused us to become more isolated. And it's led to, like you said, higher incidences of mental illness, depression, anxiety, all kinds of things that lead to suicidal thoughts and ideation. And it's just, it, it's a big, big problem in our country. It has been even before the pandemic, but it's been way worse since the pandemic. And it's it's something that definitely needs to be talked about. And, and I think you're on the right track there with a product that that is uh, available right away, right? I mean, that yeah. that's the thing is, you said it yourself, when they're looking for treatment, they need treatment or when they're looking to talk to somebody, they need to talk to somebody then. Yeah. Because it may be too late the way that it was for your friend, which is, uh, it's unfortunate. Yep. And, and so, you know, and, you know, I think I'm, I'm a big patriot come from a long line of military family. And so I think it's also going to be huge for, for folks coming back from, from the military as well. So we'll be providing it to, for them for free um, to be able to, to get access and so they'll be, you know, it, it'll be, it, it's great. I mean, like I said, we, we're putting together a great team, but again, getting back to what I talked about earlier, if you're building a product, make sure there's a, a, lar- a, a good audience, you know, large enough audience. Don't build it just because you think it's cool. Uh, you know, do the research interview, you know, in this case, it's individuals as well as, you know, as well as the practitioners that are going to be, at, you know, listing themselves on the site to be able to take the treatment in and then, you know, just having a great plan, a great budget, a good, uh, you know, financial uh, plan behind it and a good marketing plan. Because when you're launching consumer-based products like that, you know, the multiple of investment, the multitude, multiple of money that it takes to actually get a consumer-based product is 10x any kind of B2B product. So I, you know, some people teach, say, t- go big or, you know, but I say start small, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and uh, and start with something that's, you know, start with something that's basic that solves the biggest problem that you can find in the industry that you are passionate about. And yeah. you got to be passionate about it. Otherwise, don't do it. You know, if you're not if you're going to go into being a small business owner, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're going to hit a lot of roadblocks. You know, I, you're, I always tell people it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You got to pace yourself as well. You know, when I started my company, I was working at IBM um, and decided I was going to do it on the side, which I don't necessarily suggest that either. Honestly, if you can go all in, save up some money, get, get a, get a nice, you know, paycheck or have somebody else that either, you know, can help finance it or, or support you. Um, you got to go all in full, full speed with your whole mind, body, spirit, if you're going to be successful in starting a small business. Yeah. Well, and we had a guest specifically for software. We had a guest on uh, almost a year ago now, and he talked about how a lot of software developers just wait too long to get it out there, right? Yeah. Like, don't be afraid to beta test it. It doesn't have to be perfect before the software is out there. That's one of the best ways to figure out the glitches and figure out where you should be going from here. Yeah, I call it, yeah, the failure to launch. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's I, I've been a victim of that many times. So, yeah. yeah, I felt that. And nothing, I always, one of my favorite saying is there's nothing worse in life than lost opportunities, right? So you see an opportunity, seize it. But at the same, and, and, you know, if you've built something, the only, the worst feeling of building the wrong thing is building something and never launching it, never getting it out to a place where people can actually pay you money, you know, to buy it. That's what venture capital is. That's why they, that's why they invest in companies that have revenue and have customers because um, there's so many great ideas, so many great products out there that never had even customer number two. You can always get one customer, right? Get num- customer number two, it's a little harder. Customer number three is a little harder. And then you get some scale, what actually starts being a little easier. And then you hit a certain range where you don't have enough market opportunity to get to the next level. You know, and that's, a, that's the point you bring in somebody else, you know, sell it, sell it to private equity or, or sell it to a, a strategic buyer that will buy the company. So I always, you know, there's, 
it's rare and i've you know been a part of taking one company public but two companies that we sold it's always easier to sell it than it is to take it public too i would never start a company today with the thought that i'm going to take it public um but you should still build it with that in mind build the quality of the company build the quality of the code because eventually you know somebody really smart is going to come in and take a look at what you built and realize you built a mansion on top of a a, a stick a stick foundation <laughs> right so you still got to build a strong foundation yep absolutely that could definitely be a podcast uh, in and of itself I think we got about five more that we can do basically <laughs> today. I'm excited, guys. Yeah. See you yeah, for we, the next five days. <laughs> we definitely have a few more for sure. Um, well, I I for one have really enjoyed the conversation. I haven't even told Landon this, but uh, you know, I think Landon basically closes out every show that we have, and I feel like he should have his own segment, right? Like the last word with Landon Mance. So yeah. Landon, take it away. All right. Last word with Landon Mance. That's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> You know, uh, Travis, I, I'd like to encapsulate the takeaways, but uh, I feel like there, yeah, I, I feel like I've got too many to, to list off right now in the amount of time we have left. So um, I, I thank you for all the advice and the knowledge you've dropped on us generally, but also uh, I learned a lot about, uh, you know, working with, uh, working with Dennis. So I appreciate that as well. And it, it sounds like uh, in all of your years of experience working with dentists, you were able to successfully uh, translate that over to uh, your personal life and finding your your girlfriend, right? Because I, I think you said that she is also in that field. So you've been able to take all of your uh, experience and make sure your pitch to her was well uh, refined. So, but uh, no, we really enjoyed the conversation. We're at, and I'm going to launch this because none of my friends even know this, but I also just bought a rig. So we're, we're not just boyfriend, girlfriend, we're, we're, we're ready to take it to the next phase. So the fact that this is live and now I'm going to get a bunch of my friends saying what? <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. Yeah. So it feels great. You know, when you find that right person that's supportive and you know, I'm, I'm like addicted to being in love with her. It's that good. It's amazing. So she's an amazing person. She's a doctor, a hospital doctor and uh, you know, has just just supported so who knows maybe we'll get into the the more into the medical realm with the with the next couple of products that we've got as well right right absolutely well travis uh, again really thank you for coming on this was a great conversation for anybody that wants to look you up and have a have a conversation with you about whatever uh what's the what's the best place for them to find you yeah, so Dr. DDS, drdds.com or travisrogers.com, and it's Travis Rogers with a D. Um, and, uh, the, you know, there's a schedule link right on there. I love having conversations uh, with people that, you know, have ideas um, and uh, want to bring products to, you know, build software in general. All the concepts we talked about today are not dental specific. They're not healthcare specific. There's some, a lot of general concepts. And, and um, I'm at a point where I just, I, I enjoy helping people. Um, but if somebody's really, really wants to get in the dental industry, that's, that's my lane hundred percent. I can tell people the right people, all the landmines, you know, and uh, I always say I've got, you know, all my limbs have been blown off because I've hit all the landmines. So now I know how to guide people through the landmine field without hitting any of those landmines. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Sounds good, Travis. Well, again, thank you for joining us. And uh, we want to uh, throw this out there, you know, six to 12 months. We want to let's bring you back on and give us an update on some of the stuff you've been working on, because it sounds like you've got some really promising projects. So we'll, uh, we're, we're rooting for you. And uh, we look forward to hearing about your continued success. Thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. been listening to tycoons of small biz proudly hosted by austin peterson and landon mance austin and landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial estate and succession planning for small business owners 
Austin Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin Landon and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform.